how they brought the good news from Ghent to Aix is one of Browning's poems that uh, most school children know. Maybe they have to learn parts of it by heart. It's a poem, obviously, in the narrative tradition, telling of how three horsemen ride through the night to tell people in the city of Aix, which we would now call Aachen, the good news that will save the town. The nature of the good news is never revealed, which is perhaps rather strange, and I'll come back to that point later. But evidently the news is urgent, otherwise we wouldn't have a horse ride in which two of the horses perish on the way through exhaustion. Another rather strange thing is that in view of the urgency of this message, the riders do not take the most direct route, but one that heads northwards and then down again. Perhaps we can discuss why that might be the case. So I'll read it. I sprang to the syrup and Joris and he, I galloped, Dirk galloped, we galloped all three. Good speed, cried the watch as the gate bolts undrew. Speed echoed the walls to us galloping through. Behind shut the postern, the lights sank to rest, and into the midnight we galloped abreast. Not a word to each other, we kept the great pace, neck by neck, stride by stride, never changing our place. I turned in my saddle and made its girth tight, then shortened each stirrup and set the peak right, rebuckled the cheek strap, chained slacker the bit, nor galloped less steadily Roland a whit. Twas moonset at starting, but while we drew near, Lockeran the clocks crew and twilight dawned clear. At boom a great yellow star came out to see. At Duffeld twas morning as plain as could be. And from Mechelen's church steeple we heard the half chime, so Joris broke silence with, yet there is time. At Ershot upleapt of a sudden the sun, and against him the cattle stood black every one, to stare through the mist at us galloping past, and I saw my stout galloper Roland at last, with resolute shoulders, each butting away, the haze as some bluff river headland its spray. And his low head and crest, just one sharp ear bent back, for my voice and the other pricked out on his track. And one eye's black intelligence, ever that glance, o'er its white edge at me, his own master askance. And the thick heavy spume flakes which I, and anon, his fierce lips shook upwards in galloping on. By Hasselt, Dirk groaned and cried, Joris, stay spur. Your horse gallop bravely, and the fault's not in her. We'll remember at Aix, for one heard the quick wheeze of her chest and saw the stenched neck and the staggering knees and sunk tail and horrible heave of the flank, as down on her haunches she shuddered and sank. So we were left galloping, Joris and I, past Lose and past Tongres, no cloud in the sky. The broad sun above laughed a pitiless laugh. Neath our feet broke the brittle bright stubble like a chaff.
Till over by Dalhem a dome spire sprang white, And gallop, gasped Joris, for Aix is in sight. How they'll greet us, and all in a moment his roan Rolled back and croup over, lay dead as a stone. And there was my Roland to bear the whole weight Of the news which alone could save Aix from her fate. With his nostrils like pits full of blood to the brim, And with circles of red for his eye sockets rim. Then I cast loose my uh, buff coat, each holster let fall, Shook off both my jack boots, let go belt and all, Stood up in the stirrup, loaned, patted his ear, Called my Roland his pet name, my horse without peer, Clapped my hands, laughed and sang, any noise, bad or good, Till at length into Aches Roland galloped and stood. And all I remember is friends flocking round, As I sat with his head twixt my knees on the ground, and no voice but was praising this Roland of mine, As I poured down his throat our last, last measure of wine, Which the Burgesses voted by common consent, Was no more than his due, who brought good news from Ghent. What do we make of this poem? Is it just a, a very rousing, exciting um, story? But with Browning, we find there's very often, if not always, some allegorical meaning here. And I think we have to look at certain key words, as we do with many poems of Browning, particularly, as I've mentioned before, in the Pied Piper of Hamelin. So, what are these interesting words? There's the mention of, well, first of all, there's the fact that two horses die and the third horse survives to bring the good news. Could that not be an indication of some religious message? We note in the Pied Piper of Hamelin the three notes in a poem which speaks of rising from a cavern. It's not far fetched to say that there could be some indication of a religious message, the good news, which is after all the basis of the word gospel. And then this reference to blood and the horse Roland himself even drinks this wine, and you have the wine and the blood association very strongly. One other word I'd like to say about this picture, it is in fact a tapestry, which was woven by a lady by the name of Berta Tita, resident of Jerusalem. And she was killed with, I think, 16 other people in a terrorist, suicide terrorist attack on the 11th of June, 2003. A woman, 63 years of age, what had she to do with politics? A woman who devoted her days to helping poor people. In fact, she was on a mission to help some poor people when a young man disguised as an ultra-religious Jew entered this bus which was on a line Mrs. Tita did not normally use and detonated a bomb. So this picture still survives and it's perhaps that message of good news has something to tell us today, just as those Three horses do in the poem I have just read.